Hello everyone, Micah again, coming at you with the second part of my updated guide to the final Coils of Bahamut, where we're going to be covering the last two turns. Since I covered most preliminary information, like gear and whatnot, in the first part, I'm not going to cover that here again. I'm just going to go directly into the battle since there is a lot to cover, so let's get into it. These next two battles have no mini gauntlet that you need to run through to get to the boss. After some pretty fantastic cutscenes, they're going to put you directly into the arena. The first of which, of course, is a battle against the legendary Phoenix. Now, the Phoenix is honestly going to likely be the easiest encounter you will have since the last set of binding coils. He goes down incredibly quick and most of his phases and attacks are just completely skipped. When the battle begins, you can simply pull the Phoenix and begin to DPS him. Like all previous bosses, there's really nothing left in his toolkit that's going to do any real damage to you at this point. All of his most devastating attacks and his tank busters are barely going to scratch you if you even see them at all. You should push the Phoenix into his second phase incredibly quickly, which will be indicated by his casting brand of purgatory and leaving you with a debuff called either chain or arm of purgatory. This cast is going to be indicated by a green or purple animation over your character. Now this buff will make you take massive damage to an attack called flames of unforgiveness, but you should not see that cast in anymore in this phase. You will have to deal with it later however. After receiving the debuff from Brand of Purgatory, another, this time blue indicator will appear above your head and eventually drop a large blue pool of yuck on the floor that will give you a heavy debuff, decreasing your movement speed, and a dot. Simply run this to the outer portion of the arena and drop it there. This is the first half of a two part attack, but that second part should be completely skipped. You should be able to push him into his third phase, which begins around 50% health before you see it. And that should be completely doable. During these first two phases, Bennu ads are also going to be spawning at certain intervals. You just want to kill these immediately. They're going to buff the Phoenix if left alive, but they're also going to go down in just a hit or two. You also no longer need to worry about positioning these adds before you kill them. You can simply take them out where they spawn. You're going to see one, most likely, maybe a second one before you push him into his third phase. When the Phoenix enters this phase, he's going to become invulnerable, he's going to go up into the air and land at the northern end of the arena, engulfing himself in a large pillar of flame. This pillar of flame is also an instant death zone, so don't step into it. Well in the pillar, Phoenix is going to cast Flames of Rebirth, which will do unavoidable but minimal damage and bring all Bennu adds back to life. Simply take them down as they spawn. It again should only take a couple of hits to do so. Each Bennu will also buff any others near it when it raises. But these, I mean, you may not even notice this buff anymore. It's so minor at this point. Phoenix will be able to raise the Bennus twice before they're permadead. After the adds are down, Phoenix is going to stop casting the Flames of Rebirth and enter his final phase. As soon as those flames drop, you can turn and you can start damaging the Phoenix again. And at this point, you just want to press him as hard as you can. He's going to begin this last phase by casting Brand of Purgatory again and giving you the Arm or Chain of Purgatory debuff again. This time, however, you're not going to be able to avoid Flames of Unforgiveness, so you just need to be prepared just in case. Outside of Flames of Unforgiveness, there are two main mechanics you need to worry about here. The first is Fountain of Fire, which is going to place a flaming circle of yuck on the ground and tether itself to the Phoenix. This tether is going to give the Phoenix a damage buff that's slowly going to increase, so you need to run into this pool and grab the tether yourself. This however will have a different effect on you, doing progressively higher damage to you with each pulse. So you could do one of two things here. You can continue to damage the Phoenix and take the damage yourself, or you can DPS the fountain down so it disappears faster. The other mechanic has to do with the Phoenix Iggy that are going to spawn inside and outside the arena. 
These Iggy are going to do charge attacks in one of two ways. Either they're going to create a telegraph on the ground that you simply step out of, or they're going to tether themselves to you and charge after a short countdown. You can avoid this by simply moving out of their way after the tether disappears. Eventually, Phoenix is going to cast Flames of Unforgiveness and it's going to do around 40,000 points of damage. So keep up the DPS as you dodge the Iggy and you should be able to clear this fight with relative ease. Now, you're finally going to come face to face with the great worm Bahamut himself. And this fight is mostly about doing as much DPS as you can throughout the entirety. If you're able to push your DPS, you're going to be able to skip almost every ability he has. When you first engage Bahamut, he's going to start by hitting you with standard attacks and a blue breath attack called flare breath. In this phase, he's also going to cast mega flare, which is a multi-part attack that will hit you repeatedly. The damage from one of these parts, however, can be avoided. When you see this circle rise up out of the ground, step outside of it. Mega Flare is also only going to do a few thousand points of damage each time it hits you, so it's going to be a little concern. He's going to follow this up with a Giga Flare, which will do unavoidable raid-wide damage and signal his entering into phase 2. In this phase, he's going to summon a Shadow of Maricidia, which will give Bahamut a damage buff if not killed. Now, it should go down with only a hit or two, but you want to make sure you take him out immediately. If you've been DPSing Bahamut at a decent pace, he should be close to around 50% health at this point and entering his next phase before any other mechanics can go out. This transition will be signaled by another Giga Flare and Bahamut disappearing into the air. This is the add and the dive bomb phase, and each step in this phase is timed, which means you're going to be standing around doing nothing more than anything during it. Staying in the middle of the arena makes all the mechanics in this phase easier as well, so do yourself a favor, make your life easier, and stay in the center whenever possible. So after going airborne, Bahamut will reappear at a random place outside of the arena. When this happens, this icon will appear over your head, indicating a dive bomb. This mechanic works the same way it did in the fight with Twintania back in turn 5. You'll look to see where Bahamut is, and you run toward him. So when he rushes you and pushes you back, he does not push you out of the arena, which is instantly going to kill you. But there's a twist. A few seconds after Bahamut's dive bomb icon appears, this symbol will overlap it, signaling Twintania has come back for a bit of revenge. Take a quick look to see where she is. Once Bahamut finishes his dive bomb, she's going to do hers. Most of the time, she's going to miss you completely, but knowing where she is is going to help you dodge her if need be. Instead of running toward her, however, you usually want to run out of her path. For an extra little twist, as soon as Bahamut finishes his dive bomb, he's also going to drop a couple mega flares on you. So you just have to be sure you keep moving so you're able to dodge these while you're dodging Twintania. Fun, right? Next, a series of adds will spawn. Simply kill them as they do. There's nothing really too difficult here, and they always die very quickly. There's only two things that you need to know about about this phase. The Blood of Maricidia adds will switch between resisting magical and physical attacks. This transition between the two, however, happens really quickly, so there's still no real threat. They'll be invulnerable maybe for a few seconds before you can actually damage them. The Storm of Maricidia will spawn in the center of the arena and drop a flare dampening field. You can honestly kill him anywhere you want, but seriously keep him in the middle. This is going to give you much better visuals later on when Bahamut's big attack. Trust me. The adds and the dive bombs will come in this order. There will be that first Bahamut Twintania dive bomb attack, followed by one blood and one pain of Maricidia, three gusts of Maricidia, two sins of Maricidia, another Bahamut Twintania dive bomb attack, a Storm of Maricidia, a Blood of Maricidia, two Gusts of Maricidia, a Sin of Maricidia, a Pain 
of Maricidia. And finally, Bahamut will do another dive bomb attack, but this time with no Twintania. He will still, however, still try to hit you with Mega Flares. Next, Bahamut will appear in the north end of the arena in front of a large eye in the sky and begin to cast Terra Flare. This is Bahamut's large and very, very beautiful attack. If you stand in the flare dampening field, this attack is barely going to touch you, so you can just sit back and enjoy the light show. Now Bahamut is going to be in his final phase, and it will be a race to see who can kill who first. So you really want to push your damage here, because believe me, Bahamut will be pushing his too. He's going to begin this phase by using Ock Morn, which is going to hit you multiple times, doing around a total of 50,000 points of damage. He's also going to use Mega Flare again and tether himself to you, which will indicate he's planning on hitting you with an attack called Tempest Wing. Tempest Wing will likely kill you if he gets it out. Avoid the Mega Flares as best you can and brace for Tempest Wing as you continue to beat him down. This is the make or break point. If you push your DPS here, you can take him down before Tempest Wing goes out. The phase is all about pushing your DPS. The whole fight's about pushing your DPS, but it's certainly doable with some practice. So if you don't get it the first couple of times, don't fret, you will. And with that, you've completed the Binding Coils of Bahamut. Congratulations! And now you can glam up those sweet, sweet Bahamut weapons. I personally think they're some of the most beautiful weapons we have in the game. I've collected all of them. I just absolutely love them. But now that we're done with the Binding Coils, I'm going to be moving on to other content and finishing updated guides to various A Realm Reborn stuff so I can then move on to updated guides of the Heavensward expansion. If this video was helpful, please drop me a like and you can always subscribe for more. You can also follow me on Twitter, which is linked below, for some fun random stuff I put out there or just to keep up with my video schedule. If there's anything you want to see, I'm always open to suggestions, so just shoot me a message. But as per the usual, it's a Benahoot. Until next time, have fun.